Good morning. A uh, ministry that's near and dear to our heart is the Prison Mission Association. Of course, we support it with fervent prayers, but also here at 11th Avenue Church, we offer financial support to the Prison Mission Association. If you'd like to know more about them or to contribute to their ministry, or just to, to look at the resources that they have to offer, you can find them on the internet, Prison Mission Association. Also, uh, you can find their, a link to their site from our website at 11thAvenueChurch.com. It's an honor today to have Dwight Anderson here this morning with us, who is the uh, executive director for Prison Mission Association. So I'll not take up any more of his time and just turn it over to him. Dwight. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. I gotta tell you, this is a very special moment. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but this is like the birthplace of Prison Mission Association, because Joe Mason, back in 1955, started the mission right here in this church. He came to know and understand the Word of God, rightly divided, and uh, with Brother Shiflet and, and, and a, lot, a lot of you guys here, um, helped him develop the courses and develop this ministry from here. And then he did eventually move to Arizona and then to California, and eventually now our home office is up in Port Orchard, Washington. But this is like the, this is the birthplace, you know, so it's, it's really special to me. So let me just, just open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to come today to share from your word and to share in the blessings um, and the fruit of what has gone on since 1955. It started right here in this church on 11th Avenue in Manor Wells, Texas, and how you've really blessed the ministry through Joe Mason and through all of the directors after that, and how you are turning hearts to Christ, transforming lives and marriages and families, Lord, through the power of the gospel of the grace of God. And I just want to just express my deep appreciation uh, for all you've done for us, Lord, through the person of Jesus Christ who gave his very life and poured out his blood on the cross for us to redeem us, to buy us back. And I thank you that we can all be redeemed, no matter what you've done, no matter where we've gone, Lord, that you love us. And I thank you for everyone here today, Lord, that we can celebrate and worship you together and exalt your name together. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, I just want to say a deep thank you to each and every one of you for your prayers and support from the very first of 1955 uh, to where we've come to today with Prison Mission Association. Now, I really got first introduced to PMA when Joe Mason came and spoke at Grace Bible College. I attended there from 1979 and I graduated in 1982. So um, he came and spoke at the chapel at Grace Bible College, and I was, I was very inspired by him. And then I went actually into full-time Christian ministry with Grace Ministries International. Actually, at the time, it was called Grace Mission, um, and we, we served in Australia for 20 years. I worked with uh, Pastor Andy and Janine Hollier. I don't know if you know the Holliers. Um, so I served in Australia, and then back in 1987, I came back for our furlough, and uh, one of our supporting churches was Grace Bible Church down in Mobile, Alabama. And Cal Louder was the pastor at the time. And he said, Dwight, would you want to go into the prison and the jail with me on Tuesday? And I said, sure. So he went in there and he had a milk crate with all the PMA lessons. And he had certificates for those that completed their lessons. And he handed them out. And I'm telling you, the, the, the men and the women were so excited to read God's word. I mean, it, I just, I'd never seen anything like it. Like, they were just so enthusiastic so appreciative of, of the opportunity to learn and grow in God's word. And I said, could we do this in Australia? And he did, he gave me a whole box. He said, yeah. And so he, he shipped, a, it was called an M bag back then, a huge box of PMA lessons. And I started doing it in Australia back in 1987. and went into the local jail there, the Parramatta jail near Sydney where we were serving. And um, it just ca caught on fire. I mean, they got so excited, um, we had, so many people learning and understanding the Bible. And one guy, uh, Mark Crosley, who he even had his own little newsletter in the prison and he was circulating, distributing our lessons and it was just amazing. So then in 2014, just gonna fast forward the story a little bit, but 2014, we had come back to the States, our family, and then Joe Campos, who was a friend of mine, he was the director of PMA at the time, and he said, Dwight, I'm gonna go to Brazil, back to Brazil. You should consider becoming the director. And so I said, I'd pray about it. And I talked to my wife and he said, it's just part time. It's like one weekend a month. 
because I was worried about a lot of traveling. <laughs> and my wife, but my wife said, yeah, that's okay. One weekend a month would be okay, because she doesn't really travel very, very well. She gets like travel sickness, and she's got fibromyalgia, and it's hard for her to sit for a long time in, a, in one spot. But anyway, so the Lord worked it out, and we were, uh, got the call from the board to become the director back in 2014. And so it's just been an amazing ministry, the most exciting ministry I've ever been involved with. So we more than doubled the number of lessons that we were producing the first year. And um, it was just, just been a, just a real exciting uh, blessing uh, to be a part of this ministry. And um, I did put together a video that gives some testimonials. A couple people from uh, our area, I live in Minnesota. So when they hired me, it was part-time. They said, would you move to Washington, Port Orchard, Washington? I said, well, it's, it's only going to be part-time. Um, and I can't really afford to move my whole family over there with the part-time. And really, Minnesota is a little more central for me to travel in places. So I am now full-time, but I live in Minnesota, but the home office is in Port Orchard. So I get back there once or twice a year for the board meetings and, and, and different things. We have like appreciation picnics and different things like that for the staff and the volunteers back at the home office. But so I've got the video, a short video here that'll share a little bit of the, some of the testimonials recently, the people that have come to understand the Lord Jesus Christ. And so hopefully the sound and everything will work here. Pastor Dwight Anderson, I'm the director of Prison Mission Association, and I'm excited to be able to talk to you about our ministry. It got started back in 1955 with a guy named Joel Mason down in Texas as he did jail ministry, prison ministry. And he found that oftentimes the prisoners or the inmates would get relocated to other locations and he wanted to follow up with it. So he developed a correspondence course that he could mail. So our lessons can go anywhere the mail goes. And we now have over 38,000 students all across the country. We're pretty much every jail and prison across America. And our goal is to develop leadership from within the prisons and plant house churches, or micro churches, what they're calling them now, uh, within each prison and each jail. And so I'm excited to talk to you about Dave Kepner, who was one of our students, Vern Hendrickson, who went into the Scott County Jail, and uh, he was mentoring David and going through the Bible courses. And David just, just got so on fire for the Lord, and his life was just transformed. What's really exciting is that Dave now is out of prison, and he, God has called him to develop the New Creations ministry. So what I love about that is that God redeemed him, pulled him out of prison, and now he's put him in a place of, of, of ministry where he can give back to the community. And he's helping those that are coming out of prison, coming out of recovery, giving them, uh, equipping them with a career and teaching them how to work on cars and body work here at New Creations. I was lost in, in my life, you know, I was really wrapped up in my own business. I had, um, you know, several businesses and it came to a point in my life where I uh, ended up in prison. I uh, lost everything that I had worked for, business, marriage, all of those things. And then, um, you know, I came to that point where I was at the end of myself. And from, from that point, I um, surrendered every room in my house, sh shall I say. You know, every area um, I surrendered in, and because my way got me into uh, prisons and treatments and drug addiction through my whole life. But when I came to the end of my road of myself, um, that's really when God was able to uh, to sculpture and mold me into what His will is for me. And um, by being humble and grateful for. What he has for me to do and really just surrender that's the key um now it's when i get up each morning i have a bounce in my step i willfully will my will to god's will and um, that's the difference in the key in my life i've really come to this understanding and, and really of, of being able to be a servant for the lord one of his friends that he reached in the prison was named was jim kralik he introduced him to the pma the prison mission association Bible correspondence course. I did a prison outreach program for Pastor Dwight Anderson. And it was during this time that I really started to open up and understand wholeheartedly what the Bible was all about and what Christ did for us. We were doing a retreat. It was a three-day retreat. At the one point during the retreat, they dim the lights, and this is when you wholeheartedly give yourself over to 
God, come to Christ, and all your troubles, your fears, your anxieties, you lay that all on the table, and you ask God into your life. You can see I'm starting to get a little emotional now just thinking about it. Up to this point, I was very angry. Uh, I had lost my house, I had lost my job, I had lost everything I worked my entire life for. I was very bitter, and like I mentioned before, I was suicidal. Depression ruled my life, and anger was a huge part of my life. At the drop of a hat, in an instant, I could explode. And that night, at that moment, during the retreat, I asked God to help me with that. And uh, I said, Man, I didn't want a life. I did not want to live life like that. And this feeling came over. Great warmth that was in the room. I, I was starting to tear up, get very emotional. And almost instantly, after asking Christ into my life, I could feel this peacefulness, this calmness that settled down over me. The anxiety, the anger, the depression slowly started to go away. I've been a true believer ever since that day. But anybody that's known me long enough to see the old me and the new me, they definitely noticed the change. I ended up, when I got out of prison, hooking up with Dave here at New Creations. We are building new creations into something special. Both Dave and Jim are involved at Bethesda Church and in the local church and here at the New Creations Ministry. So I am so excited how God can take lives and turn them around and use them to continue to bring the gospel of the grace of God that transforms hearts, lives, and marriages. And so I want to thank you for your prayers and support for Prison Mission Association and for New Creations Ministry. And if you do want more information about Prison Mission, our website is prisonmission.org and New Creations is newcreations.org. So again, I'm Pastor Dwight. I want to thank you and God bless you for watching this video. My name is Pastor Dwight. Oh, hi, my name is Pastor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But um, I know most people don't want you to use your cell phones, and I know it said to turn your cell phones off, but at some point it would be nice if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and maybe share that on social media and get the word out about PMA because a lot of people, I don't know how many here have a loved one or know someone that's in prison. Um, even uh, the pastor was sharing with me, he knows someone that was in prison. And so, um, and actually, I've had my uncle was in prison, my brother-in-law was in prison, I visited my nephew in Australia in prison, <laughs> a lot of my family have also been incarcerated. So it, it's, it's something that, you know, I'd like to just pause and pray for you guys too in your church here and, and, and that you might really be able to reach out to those people that have been affected by incarceration. So let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now for this church here, and I thank you for this church family and the love that they have here for one another. And I pray for their loved ones or friends or people that they know that are incarcerated. Lord, that they'd be able to reach out to them and share your love with them and maybe send them their, our little short introductory Bible lesson and encourage them to listen to you and read your word and that you can transform their life and, and, and take something that's been a horrible experience for them and use it as a powerful instrument in their life to put them on track with you, Lord, and in tune with you, and that the Holy Spirit can use that experience to grow their faith and reach their families and their loved ones for Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've already talked a little bit about Joe Mason, but here's... Um, Joe, and this is Ada, his second wife, his first wife, Helen, I think was the one that was coming here when, but she's passed away, had passed away. And Ada just passed away probably about a month ago. Um, she was living in Arizona. So um, the goal, he formed PMA right here in your church to reach prisoners for Christ and help them apply and study God's word in a personal way. So it's, it's a very exciting thing to be here. And all of our PMA lessons come from the mid-acts dispensational point of view. So if you do want, want to help people learn and grow, 
and understanding God's word, rightly divided. You can download those webs, all the lessons from our website and use them. And um, I do have a sample of the in one page introductory lesson. It's just one page front and back. And that's what I bring in when I bring into prison. I bring in boxes of Bibles and I give them this one to start them out with. And this is something you can mail to your loved one or your friends. Or if you sign up for our PMA prayer newsletter, you can actually put your, all I need is their prison, their name, their prison ID number, and then their address, and we can mail them directly the lesson as well. Um, so we, we have a, a joy a partnership with the Berean Bible Institute. Some of you maybe know Rob, Dr. Robert Nix. He's a personal friend of mine. And so they give, if, they, if you complete all 35 of the PMA lessons, you can get six credit hours at uh, the Berean Bible Institute. And you don't have to be in prison to get that college credit either, so you can be out of prison and do the lessons and get the credit. So since I became the director, we started tracking it, and now in the last seven years since I became the director, we have almost 20,000 new students. So we just praise the Lord for how he's done mighty and great things. And then I had a, um, an intern, a student intern from Grace Bible College do the research on my, uh, my like 250 of our recent graduates who gra completed all 35 lessons. And we calculate it out, because it's public knowledge. If the person's in prison or not, you can put in their prison ID number and track them. Um, but the recidivism rate, the national average, is two out of three people will repeat offend within three years and be right back into prison. But if they complete all 35 PMA lessons, it's only 10.2% instead of 67%. So it not only transforms their lives, but it's, it saves the government a lot of money, actually, <laughs> because it, it costs between low, minimum security is maybe 35,000 a year, up to 60,000 a year with the supermax uh, inmates that we're paying to keep these guys, the 2.2 million incarcerated. So I just wanna thank you for your prayers and for your support for this ministry. And I really don't have time to go too much longer here because I wanna get to my sermon, but um, I've also started a prison transformation radio podcast. So if you're into podcasts, there's information on that in, on the back table. And not only do we try to reach the inmate, I try to reach their whole family. So we, we send one of these to their spouse and allow them to get into the Bible. And then I don't know if you've heard of the Mailbox Club, but it's a full color Bible correspondence course for kids, both in English and in Spanish. And it's based on the King James Bible. And um, it's free for ages four to 18. And so we sign up the kids and the children uh, to actually study, study the Bible as well. And I have some more information if you want on that. And I would encourage you, if you want to, if you don't get our PMA newsletter, we send it out in the spring and the fall, just twice a year. Maybe, Charlie, you could pass around the clipboard. If you want to get our newsletter, um, you can just sign up for that today. We would really, really appreciate that. And that's really the most important thing that I need. We're in a spiritual battle. We need your prayers and support. And um, I think the guys handed out, did you all get a sermon outline? Okay, good, good, good. So there's more information in that packet. I'm going to have to just fly through this to be real quick here. But Simone Monfort is our new operations manager. Karen Bedoich did it for 25 years. Cal Bedoich was the grace pastor, and his wife, Karen, was our operations manager. And now we have Simone Fort, who became our operations manager last year, and she's doing a really great job. So continue to pray for her in Washington and then me in Minnesota. And we do have a need for a Spanish ministry coordinator. We need someone who's bilingual that can read and write in Spanish to help us develop that because um, that's just something that we really need right now. Now one of the other exciting development is is because we're into the digital age um, and a lot of um, prisoners, they can't, well actually very, really they can't access the internet at all, but they have developed a digital tablet where you can put content on the tablet and then they can access that in the prison. And so one of the companies that does it, it's called Edovo, and they put our all of our lessons on the t digital tablet. And since they did that in 2001, we've had 55,000 PMA lessons completed on the digital tablet. So that's another aspect that you can pray about because by the end of this year, they're hoping to have uh, the app on over 100,000 tablets in, in the prisons in, in USA. And we've opened up what I call Bible Correspondence Fellowship. Because we've, we've really outgrown what the home office can handle, I've had to decentralize it. So we have 45 of these BCFs all across the country and then overseas. And so what they do is we give them the lessons 
And we give them the answer keys and the master certificates. And then so instead of mailing it to Port Orchard, Washington, they mail it to their church address. So like 11th Avenue Church, if you guys wanted to start one here, they would mail it to you guys here. And then you'd have a coordinator here that could help and develop a team of correctors. And then you hand those out. They correct the lessons, and then they mail them back to the inmates. And you'd be able to mentor that. And it can, it's a ministry you can do right from your own home. You don't actually, actually have to go to prison to do that. So we've opened up one in Uganda this last year, a new one in Tanzania, one in Kenya. He's a, he lives right on the border of Kenya and Uganda, and he goes to both prisons in there. And then a brand new one in Cameroon, in Kumba. And this Pastor Cha Joseph, he wrote, emailed me and he said he came to know the Lord through our lessons back in 1996. And now he wants to do a prison ministry there with his pastor friend. And, um, and in Paraguay with GMI, they've started a ministry now in using our Spanish lessons down there. And there's a new one in Zambia. And I really don't have time to go through all this, but um, we do have a new resource that should be in your packet there. Is, uh, when I worked in Australia, Andy Hollier is a great Bible teacher, and he's making these little trifold Bible studies for us, and um, we're putting them up on our website, and um, you can access those, and I, I put one of those in there for you, Distinctions That Matter, that's, that's really good. And um, so we encourage you to, to continue to be involved as a prayer partner, maybe serve as a lesson corrector if you wanted to correct <coughs> lessons, support us as a, continue to support us as you are now. And if you know anybody that does know Spanish, it's bilingual, we could really use help with that. And so this morning, what I wanted to do is to share with you a message that God put on my heart about the importance of proclaiming the grace of God to everyone. And um, you have a great pastor here, you have a great church, and I, I just love uh, the ministry that you have here. And you're a generous and loving church, and you've been praying and supporting us all along since, since 19. 55 and really appreciate that. So why is it important to have a church like this here in Mineral Wells? Why is it important that why do we need more grace churches like this? Is there a need for grace more grace churches? I think there is, you know. And that's why I served for 20 years in Australia planting grace churches. And it's important for us to plant churches not only here in the USA but all across the country. And to begin to answer that why that's important, turn in your Bibles to Romans 16. Romans 16, starting with verse 25. 16, and I'll read 25 to 27. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since before the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever amen and so here we have the secret or the reason not only to the key to this message that I'm sharing with you today but really the key to every message that's preached by anyone who seeks to teach the word rightly divided correctly handling the, the word of truth. And so our message should always be the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And that mystery is what we often call the grace message. By the grace message, we mean the distinctiveness of the Christ revelation given to the Apostle Paul. That in the Paul's writings is where we have the letters that are addressed to us, the church, the body of Christ. Now, the entire Bible is written for us, but it's not all written directly to us. So not all the directions and commandments in the Bible are for us to take personally. And so the fact is God's given many different directions, you know, with, with Adam, um, his directions on his dietary laws, and, and Moses with the Ten Commandments, and Noah, you know, with building an ark, and all the different commandments. But um, so for us, for the grace message, it's for this dispensation of grace, as Paul says in Ephesians 3, Paul says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, to you Gentiles, if you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you, word, how that by revelation was made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known 
unto the sons of men, but is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs in all of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. And so understanding this message and the, the gospel of the grace of God really is the key to unlock all of the scriptures. And really, it doesn't mean we throw out anything that Paul didn't write, but that we understand it in the light of what Paul did write in understanding that scripture. And so when we understand it, it really makes the Bible, to me, when I fully understood this, I went to Grace Bible College, it just, it's like the light bulb just came on and it, it just cleared up a lot of the confusion for me, you know, whether, what, what, where, where the sign gifts fit in and, and, and water baptism and all the different things that I was kind of trying to figure it all out. But it just made the Bible so clear and made so much more sense. And so we're to proclaim the grace of God to everyone. So what does that mean? So I'd like to look at the five implications and I'm going to have to move pretty quickly. So turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And with verse 24, um, we're going to look at the five implications uh, here. And number one, our distinctive message of grace, it's worth suffering for, is the first blank if you're filling in on your outline. It's worth suffering for, and that's verse 24. It says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So we see that Paul was willing to suffer, and he went through all kinds of stuff. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by poisonous snakes. He was beaten up. I think they stoned him, I don't know, two or three times. They <laughs> tried to kill the guy. And yet he would just get up and go right back into town, you know. And um, he was imprisoned. Um, it was unbelievable. And so, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever suffered for Christ or suffered for the sake of the gospel of the grace of God. It's easy to stay comfortable and not really wanting to suffer. Um, I know that's not my favorite thing. I don't, want, I don't really want to suffer. But we need to follow the example of Paul and be willing to, to get out of our comfort zone. And that's like when I first went to Australia, it was hard because I had to leave my family and I didn't really know anybody in Australia. And so you got to leave sometimes. And, and there is a little bit of suffering there where you're stepping out of your comfort zone and doing it and stepping out in faith. And you need to consider how much effort you're putting in to get out the message of God's grace. And so it may mean giving more of your time, maybe more money. It may be whatever you have to give to the Lord and to the message of the gospel, the grace of God. So um, it's really important that we need to get this message out. And the grace message is not only worth suffering for, but number two, that it presents God's word in its fullness, which is the next blank if you're filling in your outline. That's verses 25 to 26. It says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and generations, but now made manifest to his saints. So Paul became a servant to the church to present God's word in its fullness. And um, the phrase there, God gave me, is unique. That Paul declares the fullness is found in the mystery and a mystery is something that you didn't know before. And so even though you had the Old Testament and all the, the Old Testament, and really that was the only scripture at the time when Paul was there, all they had was the Old Testament scripture written down. Uh, but the mystery hadn't been revealed until Paul was given that mystery. So just to illustrate that, I want to take, I sometimes take the bulletin, but I think I have a, actually there is two bulletins here. I hope you don't mind me doing this, but um, <laughs> like if you take the bulletin, it, it's pretty clear because you've got it all there. But what if I tear this into a couple of different pieces? Now, if you just have the first part of the bulletin and the second part of the bulletin, it's not going to be really easy to understand a lot of the announcements. Actually, I can see what hymn number is there, but you're going to miss some. You're going to miss a lot. So this is, sort of represents the past with the Old Testament. And then like Daniel and a lot of the prophets talked about the end times and you know, the, uh, the, the restoration of Israel and um, the, 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 how God was gonna deal with Israel in the future and restore, you know, the old dry bones would be restored and Israel would come back. 
and all that kind of stuff. So we had the past, we had the future, but what we're missing is the mystery, which was the dispensation of the grace of God that was revealed. So once you have those pieces, once you understand, it, the Bible makes sense. It makes sense because you've got the two tracks. You've got the prophecy. This is the prophecy program with the past and the prophetic promises given to the Israel nation of Israel in the future. But then you have the mystery, which is the body of Christ, where the Jew and Gentile become one flesh, which it hadn't been prophesied in the things like the rapture and that we don't have time to go through all of that but once you understand all of that and how that all fits together then the bible like for me it just came alive it just came alive and so it's so exciting and that's the beauty of the pma lessons it can really help enlighten people to understanding that so it presents god's word in its fullness and then number three proclaiming this grace to everyone is necessary to teach and to make known and that's verses 27 and 28 it says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glorious glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And so the mystery is very deep. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's riches in a plural sense that there's a lot in there. And so um, one... Uh, one commentary translated, which is Christ among you, the Gentiles. This was the first time that the Gentiles had heard the glorious message of the mystery that would now be fellow heirs and partakers of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. And so it's a very, very amazing thing as we study this through. And verse 28 says that we preach and proclaim him, Christ, teaching in all wisdom that may present everyone mature or perfect in Christ. And so everyone is the need for evangelism all around the world and to reach everyone. And everyone can be redeemed and hear the gospel. And so it's really, really important. And I know you guys understand that. But um, we just need to really, really keep that in forefront in our mind that what is really, really important to focus on for all of eternity is not just, you know, what kind of car you're driving now. Because a million years from now, it's not going to matter if I had a VW or a a BMW, you know, or whatever, it's not going to matter. What's really going to matter is two things that live last forever is God's word and people, their souls, are going to live forever. So they're going to either live forever in hell or in heaven. And so we need to get this message out. It's really, really important. And I have to think of uh, the quick illustration here is one of the things that I find in, a, in, in prison, it's a very spur. Sp fertile spiritual harvest field. So I don't know if any of you guys like to garden. I know my wife loves to garden. So when we first moved to our house, we had this one garden bed that was already there. It's one on the left. And um, it, my wife says, hey, we need to double the garden. She wants to. So anyway, we looked on Craigslist, and there was someone giving away some free organic dirt. So I went and got all this free organic dirt, and we put that in it. We planted the same plants. It was the same water. We, we used the same sprinkler on there, the same sunshine. Everything was the same. The only thing different was the, was the dirt. It was organic. And look at it. It's like twice as big and fast, and it was just amazing. So when I go to prison, people there, they know they're sinners. They got time to read the Bible. They don't have a lot of distractions. They don't have internet and cell phones. At least they're not supposed to have cell phones. Some people do. But, but anyway, so they have opportunity to really grow, and I call it the greenhouse effect, where they can really concentrate and study God's word, and, and God can really move and change their lives. And so that's the opportunity that we have there. So as far as you guys, for the local church, I have this little cartoon there. On one side, we have, why don't people talk or talk to us? These are the people that aren't going to church. And then we have the church building. Why don't those people come to our meetings? We're kind of scratching our heads, like, why aren't they coming to hear about the message of God's grace? So what's missing in that picture, do you think? A bridge. Is that what you said? A bridge, yes. And a bridge is, uh, what kind of bridge do you think they need there? The bridge we need to build is a bridge of relationships. And ministry really flows through relationships. So my heart and passion is for evangelism and church planning. And so that's why now that we see that this is such a fertile harvest field, I want to plant churches right in the prison and develop leadership from within, rather than parachuting in and doing prison ministry and then pulling out, but to develop the leadership right from within the prison. And so I want to encourage you to really pray for your community and build relationships with those that are outside of the church. 
and pray for three people that you could invite to church or the people, three people that you know that don't know Christ. And if you don't know anybody that doesn't know Christ, and sometimes that can happen because we're so involved in church and all our friends are Christians, you know, we need to make connections with our neighbors and those that don't know Christ. Number four, it's, it's the, why we need to present this uh, and why it's important is it's a struggle. A struggle is the fill in the blank there. But we're to work in God's energy, not to rely on our own energy, but Christ's energy who works powerfully in us. And that's verses 29 um, of Colossians 1, uh, 29. It says, Where unto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And so that's how we, we're going to do this. We're not going to do it with, with the money that you've got or the money that I've got. Or the energy that I've got, we got to do it through God's power, God's strength, and God's resources. And he's going to provide for that. And so it really challenges me to move out for God, not in what I can do, but what God can do. And so when I dream, I dream big, like because I think God wants to do great things, not just what I can do within my, what I have. not I know there's not much in my pocketbook, but I know that God can do whatever needs to be done. And so let's really think about that and how we can do that. And then the fifth point, last point, is that it will encourage our hearts and unite us in love. So encourage is the blank there. And that's Colossians 2, 2 to 5. It says, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all riches, the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So that brings me back really to the beginning of the message where I shared that how the knowing the grace message the unique revelation of the mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul for us today helps make the Bible clear, and it really encourages me, and it should encourage you. And so this message is one that should unite us and encourage us to work better, you know, better and, and show love for one another, and, and that unity that we have in the power of the Holy Spirit really speaks to that, and experiencing God's grace, that it's He that has saved us, and so the grace message is not a dry doctrine. And to me, it really makes a difference when we understand it, that this message is worth suffering for. This message presents God's word in its fullness. It's necessary to make known and to teach everyone. It's a struggle, but we work at it with God's energy, and it encourages us in heart, and it unites us in love. So today, you may be a new Christian, you may be an old Christian, but I challenge you, whether you're a young person or an old person, housewife, school teacher, salesman, truck driver, technician, whatever your position is, to really grab a hold of all that God has for you and wants you to do as you study and understand God's word and be able to share it with other people. And I pray for your leadership here and your trustees and your pastor and your uh, Sunday school teachers and, and all the missionaries that you guys support because I know Satan hates this message, and he always wants to do whatever he can to thwart this message from getting out and to hurt the message and hurt the messengers. So today, if you've never really heard or understood what I'm talking about, you know, um, you can talk to the pastor or even you could sign up. You could sign up and get our PMA lessons too. Probably 10% of our student body is not in prison, but they're... they're uh, just everyday people, you know, that want to learn. And some people use it for Sunday school classes, youth groups, and different things like that. So um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you a little bit about what God has been doing through PMA and through uh, your prayers and through your support. So let me just close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for your word. Thank you for the light that it gives us in this dark world. Thank you for the hope that it gives us. Thank you for the encouragement that we get from you, Lord. And, and I pray that each and every one will make a commitment to daily dig into your word, to listen to you, and to pray. And I thank you for the ministry of PMA that was started right here in this church through Joe Mason and um, how the impact and the ripples of that are going out all across America uh, in over 17 countries around the world, of people that are, are hearing the message of God's grace because of what started back here in this church back in 1955. And I just pray that we can continue to give you all the glory and all the honor. We take no credit for this, and we just thank you 
for what you're doing now and what you're going to do in the future here at 11th Avenue Church. And for the pastor and the leadership here, just strengthen their hearts and their resolve and, and encourage them to step out in faith and reach this community for Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.